Today was a work day, and I'm still trying to get back into the flow of things while gearing up for yet another project. And he made the comment that I've been busier this year performance-wise than last year. And last year I made a short film shot like a feature, so that's saying a lot. Um, but it has been a blessing. Even in these times. Also, Daryl, you are still in my thoughts today, and I'm sending you as much love as I can across space, time, and distance. Just wanted you to know that. Um, so yeah, today I went to go get a COVID test so that I can film on Friday. So Cora has set up an amazing program in Atlanta, free testing with results in about two to three days at locations all throughout the Atlanta Fulton County area. I'm incredibly impressed. So I got in line about 9.30 for 10 a.m. testing and I registered via text when I pulled into the parking lot. Apparently I could have pre-registered, but now I know. It was all very streamlined like and there was nothing about the process itself that they have set up that caused me any anxiety in fact it somewhat relieved me and made me emotional at all the people involved in the process from the woman signaling for people to pull closer to each other to the attendants getting people's info after checking in to the persons handing out the tests the ones guiding you through the test and the support people that they had supporting them to do all that in the rain today no less it's incredibly emotional to see everybody everyone in PPE doing all this work for all of us the best of community and the best of humanity i personally didn't have any anxiety until i pulled up and then all of the thoughts rolled in like what if i have it what if i die what if i infect others what if what if what if i feel fortunate at this stage in life of being able to hold off intrusive thoughts like these until the situation warrants it past me would have had all these thoughts plaguing me for weeks on end but now it's a matter of if i can do something about it in the situation i'll worry if not then it is what it is and I hate that someone stole that phrase from me, from us, but we're going to make do. I keep looking at myself because I'm beautiful and gorgeous. <laughs> Today's a good day, apparently. Don't worry, I just started that class. Several weeks ago, I had a break in my schedule and I smoked a lot of weed. This episode is clearly not for the children. <laughs> um, it resulted in me really exploring my subconscious and realizing how much anxiety I had internally about COVID mainly because I got all paranoid from coughing that I had COVID and was actually in the process of dying, while a small part of me knew that I just smoked too much and needed to calm the fuck down. But I did explore my emotions regarding dying because of COVID and how much, and I realized how much I want to live, how much I still want to, from the Laramie Project to going to film festivals with the Duchess and future films, future, feature films. <laughs> very confusing to say well just starting with Blossom Woman to finding ways to raise $400,000 to make the waltz all the other feature films that I want to make bringing my duchy to life I just saw a building this week that well, we stay in the hotel and I want to model my duchess house after that um my daily show the show that Clone and I run together and hopefully it getting picked up someday by someone wink wink HBO we're looking at you having kids children all these hopes and dreams are still alive and still swirling and there's so much I want to do in life and I feel like it is possible. Believe it or not, like in all of this going on in the world, I'm still hopeful about the future. I'm still dreaming. No, I went through a period of not hope, but here we are. The point is, I would actually hate to die right now because there just feels like there's so much left to do and see. And all of that, which I thought I had dealt with, and I had dealt with it in its own way, but it came back again while sitting in there, in that line, waiting to get tested. How much I want to live. How this year has been trying to balance advancing my hopes and dreams while staying safe in this pandemic, in the midst of a pandemic, and a revolution. It's, it's been hard as an artist. We have been able to do so many things virtually, but some in-person things are starting to pick back up, and it does cause me a crisis of conscience of like, what if I get exposed with this time? What happens? What happens if I get it? What happens if Eddie gets it? What happens if I spread to someone that I love? All of that stuff swirls around. And so when I do take in-person projects, I 
try and number one keep myself safe and also treat them selectively i'm like what are we thinking is this worth dying for the lamry project was definitely worth dying for this next project that i'm working at and helping a fellow queer filmmaker make their film is worth dying for that is my attitude going forward until until we come to some sort of resolution with all this. But then, it kind of forces you to think about other projects, hopefully, and hopefully you say like, yeah, if I died tomorrow, for whatever reason, have I done the things that I wanted to? And so far in my life, I am so proud of what I have accomplished. Transitioning alone, making the Duchess, making it this far in an acting career, as a writer, with everyone that I've worked and performed with, graduating from UGA in a degree with a degree in competitive literature, my relationship with Eddie, my family, working at A1 Blueprint, the PA jobs I had in film, all of that stuff has been worth it, and it has made my life so rich and incredible, and especially the friends and everyone I've met along the way. All of that is to say, if you are feeling similarly, especially as an artist or even as just a regular person, not that artists are not regular people, but I think you know what I mean, I feel you. And I think that it is important that we hold on to our hopes and dreams. They are what keep us hanging on. Like for instance, I'm hoping I get something delicious for dinner tonight, even though I just had wings and I guess they were amazing, but Michael's supposed to be Look, I know I will. Michael is supposed to be cooking salmon tonight. Um, so excited about that. Still keep staring at myself because I'm so gorgeous. So with all that said, what are your hopes and dreams for once you're able to get out of here and create again? What kind of plans do you have? What do you want to achieve? Let's start setting our intentions and working towards that moment so that we, when we're in the clear and can celebrate, we know what we want to go after. Send me your hopes and dreams because... I'd like to think that we all motivate each other and knowing your hopes and dreams and you knowing mine, it's just like we can encourage each other. Like, yes, go out there and do that. Find ways to take baby steps towards it now. Or not. Because not, look, this is a pandemic. Treat yourself kindly and also, if you're not creating, that's okay too. I remember telling a friend that whenever I go on trips with Eddie, whether it's to Europe or cross country or cruise or whatever, I can't write because I'm busy taking in and, absor and absorbing on what's going on. Um, I'm trying to experience every moment. And so maybe that's just your mode for right now if you're not creating. It's okay to not create. And it's okay to not be okay. I know that for me, part of my anxiety response is to keep myself distracted as possible, and that means projects on top of projects on top of projects. But what's going to happen now is I just got off of work, I ate. I am going to finish editing this video, finish this glass of wine, hopefully in the next one minute because I am due for a meeting with my lovely partner Clorinda as we work out some stuff for mass. So as always, keep bearing the lights of being. I love you all and until next time.